So today we're looking at a few simple things that you can do to train your brain to spend less and save more. And I once heard someone describe saving money as one of the hardest things that we can do. So with all that being said, getting ahead sometimes might require some mental training. But before jumping in, I create videos on personal finance and money mindset. So hit the subscribe button if you like these types of videos and you want to see more. So the first thing you need to do is make sure that you're saving something every single day. And to be clear, this does not have to be some crazy amount of money even if it's only a dollar or maybe just a few cents the idea is to make sure that you're getting into a regular habit where saving money becomes routine or a way of life and there are multiple ways to do this for example at the end of each day some people will take all the change that's in their purse or their pocket and put it in a coin jar or if they break a $5 bill, they will save their ones. But you can also get a little creative with this. One of my favorite money saving challenges is the bank account challenge, where you'll check your bank account and look for the previous day's ending balance. And whatever the last digit is of this balance, you'll transfer that amount into savings. So if the ending balance is $415, you'll transfer $5. And this is something you can do every day of the week or only on a few days and then incorporate other saving strategies on the remaining ones. Keep in mind too that you can also save money every day by reviewing your shopping cart before checking out. So if you go to the store, before you actually make a purchase, take one final look at your selections and then see if you can put at least one item back. The second thing you can do is stop viewing no as a negative. Now, when it comes to saving money, you will have to make some sacrifices, that is a given. So you might not go out as much or shop as much and you might have to turn down a few invites. And when you're saying no to activities you enjoy, it might feel as if you're missing out or that everyone is having fun and you're not. But this is a dangerous way to think because it will make it so much harder to stick with your goal. So instead of always viewing no as a negative, train your brain to think of it as a positive. So in other words, if you turn down an invitation, don't view it as saying no to going shopping or maybe going to the movies because what you're actually doing is saying yes to becoming more financially fit, which can include saying yes to paying off your credit card debt or maybe saving a down payment or a vacation fund. Another simple thing you can do is mentally prepare for splurges. Splurging is good and healthy when you're on a savings journey and I've said this before, one of the worst things you can do is completely deprive yourself because this often backfires. But at the same time, a treat should be calculated and intentional or else there's the risk of overspending. Maybe you have your favorite iced coffee that you're not willing to give up. If so, that's perfectly fine. However, allowing yourself this splurge should not be an open invitation to grab one whenever the mood hits because the mood it might hit every day in which case that can really limit how much you're able to save. So it's important that we learn to control our splurges. And one of the best ways to do this is by having designated splurge days. Because if there's no rhyme or reason to when you reward yourself, you might indulge too often. But on the other hand, when something is planned and you know that it's coming, that can also help you to not feel deprived, plus it gives you something to look forward to. Another thing you can do is recognize when you're being upsold. Whether you're at a restaurant, a clothing store, or buying electronics, these establishments know how to persuade us to spend more, it's part of their sales training. I worked retail a little in college and one of my managers was really big on the upsell and we were trained to use certain techniques on every customer every single time and let me tell you a good percentage of the time they were effective we would encourage them to try on clothes even though they told us they were only browsing or weren't interested in buying anything and we would always cross sell them by recommending other items maybe a shirt or a necklace to go with a pair of pants but of course this doesn't only happen in clothing stores it happens everywhere so keep an open eye to this tactic walk into stores with your radar up and be alert to extreme helpfulness keep in mind that you you might have to also stop trusting yourself. Now, some people are able to do this. If you are disciplined and you don't have a problem sticking with your goals, this tip will probably not apply to you. But if you do, listen up, because spending less money also involves having an understanding of how you're wired and being honest with what you can and cannot handle. For example, some people can't handle saving their credit card information online because this makes shopping too easy for them. 
Likewise, some people can't handle window shopping, whether it's online or in store. Even when they say they're browsing, they always end up buying something. The problem though, is that some people will kid themselves and think that they can. And because of this unrealistic depiction of themselves, they constantly get into trouble. So I say all that to say, you have to remove the blinders and recognize your weaknesses. And from here, establish boundaries that'll keep you on track. And this might include removing saved credit card information, unfollowing certain people, or even blocking certain websites. And when you're doing your budget for the month, another final thing that you can do is take all of your larger bills and round these up to the nearest $100. And that can include your auto loan, your mortgage, your rent, maybe a student loan or something else. So if your rent or mortgage is $1,415, what you'll do is budget $1,500 for this expense. And if your car payment is $350, you'll budget $400. And this tip is great for those who have extra money to save, yet it's something they're still struggling with. And it works because you're able to build savings into your budget at the beginning of each month. And when the time comes to pay the bill, what you'll do is make the usual payment to your creditor or lender and then transfer the difference into your savings account. That's all that I have for you guys today. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, and also subscribe if you like personal finance and you want to see more videos like this. I typically post every weekend, so thank you again for watching and I'll see you in a few days.